Hello everyone, and welcome back to Fatal Curiosity. Today, we're diving into two of the most chilling examples of what happens when technology and medicine go horribly wrong. These are stories of innovation turned deadly, corporate negligence, and lives forever changed by preventable disasters. First, we'll explore the tragic tale of the Thorac-25, a radiation therapy machine that was supposed to heal, but instead became a silent killer. Then, we'll uncover the devastating impact of the Dalcon Shield, a contraceptive device that promised freedom but delivered unimaginable suffering. As always, viewer discretion is advised. Let's begin. Imagine a machine designed to heal, to fight one of humanity's most feared diseases, cancer. Now imagine the same machine, due to a series of catastrophic errors, delivering radiation doses so powerful that they burn through the flesh, shatter bones, and claim lives. This is the story of Thrac-25, a medical device that was supposed to save lives, but instead, became a harbinger of death. The 1980s were a time of rapid technological advancement, especially in the field of medicine. Computers were becoming more powerful, and there was a growing belief that would revolutionize healthcare. The Thrac-25, developed by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, or AECL, was a product of this era. It was a linear accelerator, a machine designed to deliver targeted radiation therapy to cancer patients. The machine promised precision, efficiency, and a new hope for those battling the disease. But soon, as we'll see, this device would become a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the dangers of over-reliance on technology. The Thoroc 25 was the latest in a line of radiation therapy machines developed by AECL. Its predecessors, the Thoroc 6 and the Thoroc 20, had been successful in treating cancer patients, and the Thoroc 25 was meant to build on their achievements. But there was a key difference. The Thoroc 25 relied on software to control its operations. While the earlier models had used a combination of hardware and software to ensure safety, the Thoroc 25 developers made the fateful decision to remove many of the hardware safety mechanisms, relying almost entirely on the software to prevent errors. The machine was designed to operate in two modes, a low-power electron beam for superficial tumors and a high-power x-ray mode for deeper cancers. The software was supposed to ensure the correct dose of radiation was delivered, and that the device could not operate in a way that would harm the patient. But as we'll soon see, the software had critical flaws, flaws that would lead to unimaginable consequences. The development team at AECL was confident in their design. They believed that the software had been thoroughly tested and that the machine was safe. But in reality, the testing had been limited and the software had never been rigorously reviewed for safety. The developers had assumed that because the software had worked in earlier models, it would work in the Thorac 25. But as the incidences showed, this assumption was fatally flawed. The first known incident occurred in June 1985 at the Kennestone Regional Oncology Center in Marietta, Georgia. A 61-year-old woman named June was being treated for breast cancer. She had undergone radiation therapy before, so she knew what to expect. But this time, something went terribly wrong. As the machine delivered its dose, June felt what she described as an intense, burning sensation, like a red-hot poker pressing into her skin. She screamed in pain, and the treatment was immediately stopped. June had suffered severe radiation burns, but the true extent of the damage wouldn't be understood until later. She would eventually lose her breast and shoulder functionality, and her life would never be the same. But this was just the beginning. Over the next several months, similar incidents occurred across North America. In one case, a young man named Ray Cox was being treated for a tumor on his back. The machine delivered a radiation dose estimated to be 100 times the intended amount. Ray suffered horrific burns, paralysis, and ultimately died from his injuries. In another case, a woman named Verna was treated for cervical cancer. She too received a massive overdose, leaving her with severe burns, internal damage, and a painful, lingering death. What made these incidents even more chilling was the fact that the machine showed no outward signs of malfunction. To the operators, it appeared to be working perfectly. But behind the scenes, a deadly combination of software bugs and hardware design flaws was leading to catastrophic failures. The Thorac 25 was 
in essence, a silent killer. As the incidents piled up, investigators began to piece together what was going wrong. The Thorak 25 software was riddled with bugs, including a critical race condition that allowed the machine to deliver high power radiation without the proper safety checks. In some cases, operators could accidentally input commands too quickly, causing the device to bypass its safety mechanisms. In other cases, the software simply failed to recognize that the machine was in an unsafe state. But the problems didn't stop at the software. The Thorac 25 lacked the hardware safety interlocks that had been present in earlier models. These interlocks were physical mechanisms designed to prevent the machine from operating in an unsafe condition. In the Thorac 25, the developers have removed these interlocks, relying entirely on software to ensure safety, a decision that would prove disastrous. The investigation also revealed a troubling lack of oversight. The Thorac 25 had undergone limited testing before being put into use, and the software had never been rigorously reviewed for safety. The developers had assumed that, because the software had worked in earlier models, it would work in the Thorac 25. But as the incident showed, that assumption was fatally flawed. The Thorac 25 incidents had a profound impact on the field of medical device regulation and software engineering. In the wake of the tragedies, regulatory agencies like the FDA began to impose stricter requirements for the testing and approval of medical devices. Software engineering practices were also scrutinized, with a new emphasis on safety critical systems and the importance of rigorous testing and code review. The Thorac 25 became a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the dangers of over-reliance on technology. It showed that even the most advanced systems can fail and that those failures can have devastating consequences. The lessons learned from this machine have shaped the way we design, test, and regulate technology to this day. The Thorac 25 was a machine born of good intentions, designed to fight a deadly disease and bring hope to those in need. But as we've seen, good intentions are not enough. The tragic story of the device serves as a sombering reminder of the importance of vigilance, oversight, and humility in the face of technology's power. Next, we're delving into a story that is as tragic as it is infuriating. A tale of corporate greed, medical negligence, and the exploitation of women's health. Imagine a device marketed as a safe and effective form of birth control that instead brought an unimaginable suffering, infertility, and even death. This is the story of the Dalcon Shield an intrauterine device that devastated the lives of thousands of women and forever changed the landscape of medical device regulation. The 1970s were a time of great change for women's rights and reproductive health. The sexual revolution was in full swing, and birth control was becoming more widely available. Women were gaining more control over their bodies and futures, and the demand for safe and effective contraception was higher than ever. But amidst this era of progress, a dark chapter was about to unfold, one that would expose the dangers of corporate negligence and the devastating cost of putting profit over people. The Dalcon Shield was an intrauterine device, or IUD, developed in the late 1960s by Dr. Hugh Davis, a gynecologist at John Hopkins University. Marketed as a safe and effective form of birth control, the Dalcon Shield was a small, plastic device shaped like a shield with tiny spikes meant to acre it in place within the uterus. It was touted as a revolutionary alternative to the pill, offering long-term contraception without the need for daily medication. The device was quickly acquired by the pharmaceutical company A.H. Robbins, which launched an aggressive marketing campaign to promote it. The company claimed the Dalcon Shield was safer and more effective than other IUDs on the market, and they targeted young women particularly those in developing countries, with promises of a worry-free contraceptive solution. Advertisements portrayed the Dalcon Shield as a modern, liberating choice for women, but behind the glossy ads and reassuring claims lay a dangerous truth. The Dalcon Shield was far from safe. What made the Dalcon Shield particularly dangerous was its design. Unlike other IUDs, it featured a multi-filament string made of dozens of tiny fibers encased in a nylon sheath. This string, which was meant to allow for easier removal of the device, became a breeding ground for bacteria. 
The sheath was porous, allowing bacteria to travel up the string and into the uterus, leading to severe infections. This flaw was known by the company, but they chose to ignore it, prioritizing profits over the health and safety of the woman who used their product. Soon after the Dalcon shield hit the market, reports of severe complications began to surface. Women experienced excruciating pain, chronic infections, and in some cases, life-threatening conditions like septic abortion and pelvic inflammatory disease. Many women who used the Dalcon shield became infertile, their dreams of starting a family shattered. Some even died from complications related to the device. One of the most heartbreaking cases was that of a young woman named Elizabeth. She had chosen the Dalcon shield as her form of birth control, trusting the assurances of her doctor and the manufacturer. But within months, she developed a severe infection that left her infertile. Elizabeth's story was just one of thousands. Women across the globe were suffering, their lives forever altered by a device that they had been told was safe. Another victim, a woman named Margaret, experienced a septic abortion after becoming pregnant while using the Dalcon shield. The infection spread rapidly, and she was rushed to the hospital in critical condition. Doctors fought to save her life, but the damage was too severe. Margaret survived, but she was left with permanent scarring and the emotional trauma of losing her pregnancy. Stories like Margaret's and Elizabeth's become all too common, as the Dalcon shield left a trail of devastation in its wake. The medical consequences of the Dalcon shield were horrifying. Women suffered from chronic pelvic pain, recurrent infections, and in some cases, hysterectomies to remove the damaged organs. The device also heightened the risk of ectopic pregnancy, a life-threatening condition where the embryo implants outside the uterus. For many women, the Dalcon shield didn't just fail as a contraceptive, it destroyed their health and their features. As the number of adverse reports grew, a. H. Robin found itself facing a mounting crisis. Internal documents later revealed that the company had known about the risks associated with the Dalkin Shield as early as 1971. But instead of pulling the device from the market, they doubled down on their marketing efforts, continuing to sell it to unsuspecting women around the world. The company's negligence didn't stop there. When lawsuits began to pile up, A. H. Robbins employed a strategy of delay and denial dragging out legal proceedings and offering minimal settlements to the victims. They even went so far as to destroy documents and suppress evidence in an attempt to cover up their wrongdoing. But the truth couldn't stay hidden forever. In 1974, under pressure from the FDA, A. H. Robbins finally withdrew the Dalcon shield from the market. But by then, the damage had been done. Hundreds of thousands of women had been affected and the company's actions had left a trail of suffering and devastation in their wake. The fallout from the Dalcon Shield disaster was immense. A. H. Robbins faced over 300,000 lawsuits from women who had been harmed by the device. The legal battles dragged on for years, culminating in one of the largest product liability cases in history. In 1985, the company filed for bankruptcy, unable to cope with the financial burden of the lawsuits but the impact of the Dalcon Shield disaster extended far beyond the courtroom. It exposed the need for stricter regulation of medical devices and led to significant changes in how they're tested and approved. The FDA gained new powers to require pre-market testing and post-market surveillance, ensuring that such a tragedy would never happen again. For the victims, however, the scars remained. Many women who had used the Dalcon Shield faced lifelong health issues including chronic pain, infertility, and psychological trauma. The disaster served as a stark reminder of the human cost of corporate negligence and the importance of putting patient safety above profit. The Dalcon Shield disaster is a sobering reminder of the dangers of unchecked corporate greed and the importance of rigorous oversight in the medical industry. It's a story of lives shattered, of trust betrayed, and of a system that failed to protect the very people it was meant to serve. But it's also a story of resilience, of the women who fought for justice and the changes they helped bring about. As we reflect on this dark chapter in medical history, let us remember the victims, not just as statistics, 
but as individuals whose lives were forever changed by a preventable disaster. And let us honor their memory by continuing to demand accountability, transparency, and safety in the medical devices we trust to protect our health. If you found these stories as chilling as I did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales of fatal curiosity. Until next time, stay curious, but always cautious.